The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Well, Tony, what are you waiting for? 1950. That's when they hold the next elections for the Hall of Fame. Oh, you mean you think you'll get elected? Why not? Along with Washington and Jefferson and Franklin. Precisely. And... Yeah, but why? What is your claim to fame, Tony? It's irreputable. I work for Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, The Tobacco Pouch. <laughs> Afternoon, shortly after four o'clock. The Blue Note Cafe. A huge middle-aged man enters the bar, orders a beer, empties his glass in one gulp, tosses a bill to Ethelbert, the bartender, and starts out. Before he reaches the door, it opens and... Well, hello, Ben. Uh, hello, Casey. How are you, Miss Williams? Fine, Miss Black. What are you doing on this side of the river, Ben? Oh, I cross the bridge occasionally on slumming trips to see how the other half lives. A little press for time, Casey, so don't take any wooden nickels. Yeah. I'll try not to. So long. Uh, nice to see you, Miss Williams. Uh, so long. So long, Mr. Flack. Hi, Ethelbert. Hello. Say, you two know that big guy who just went out? Sure, don't you know him? No, but I'd like him to come in often. He'd just give me a buck for a 15-cent beer. <laughs> his face is awful familiar, Casey, but I... Well, I you've seen his play. pictures in the papers hundreds of times, pal. That's Big Ben Flack. Big Ben? Yeah, the boss of Hook Ridge. He runs almost everything on the other side of the river. Oh, sure. I get him now. What's he doing over here? Uh, he probably came over to get a breath of clean air. The stench of his political machine must get too high for even Ben once in a while. Slip me a pack of cigarettes, will you, pal? Okay. I hear Flack ain't so active in his organization as he used to be. They say a smart lawyer named Lockhart gives most of the orders now. Yeah, well, you can gamble that any orders Lockhart gives are those that he gets from Ben. The big guy has that hookridge section in his pocket, and he's going to keep it there until he dies or goes to jail. Well, there's not much chance of his going to jail. He can get away with murder. And he's gotten away with it, too. You said it. I never met Lockhart, but uh, what I hear, he's a kind of a slimy double-crossing rat. Ben at least has guts. Here's for the cigarette, pal. Thanks. You two are through for the day now, ain't you? Uh-huh. We're working the early shift this week. And I have some shopping to do before the stores close. Uh, uh-oh. Well, I've got to buy a birthday present for my little nephew. And you know what boys like better than I do, so you're going with me. Uh-oh. Okay, where'll we go? We're going to Blumstein and Riley. Uh, Annie, not a big department store like that where eight million women are looking for bargains. I'm looking for bargains, so that's uh, where we'll go. No. Casey. Not Bloomstein and Riley's. Yes. No. <laughs> Well, as my sister Edna says, quote, a woman's will is always stronger than a fella's won't, unquote. <laughs> to start walking, Casey. Oh, ten million women looking for bargains. Oh. And excuse me, lady. Stop crabbing, Casey. We'll be out of the store in a few minutes. What? Oh, they're having a sale on costume jewelry. Maybe I can pick up a pin to go with my new green dress. Annie, we came here to get something for your nephew. Yeah, but and these I... pins look like real bargains, Casey. And if I can find a good-looking one for only $2.98... All right, all right. It won't take a minute to look them over. Oh, this isn't bad. Well, that's swell. Buy it. No, no, it isn't right. Uh, How do you like this one? That's perfect, Annie. Just the thing. Mm, it won't do at all. Uh, oh, here's a pretty one. Now, that's terrible. You're right, it is. Oh, I can't win. Hmm? Nothing. Oh, here's some that are priced a little higher. Maybe they're Annie, better looking. Annie. Huh? What? See that little guy at the end of the counter? Yeah. I think he just slipped a bracelet into that big umbrella he's carrying. A shoplifter? I can't be sure, but... Look, he's moving away. Let's keep our eyes on him. Okay, but... Oh, he doesn't look like a thief, Well, all crooks look like crooks. We need a 
police department. Oh, I know that. But this little man, he has a nice face, and he's so neatly dressed, and, well, he might be a college professor. Wait, he stopped at the perfume counter. Yeah? Hey, look at that tough-looking hombre. That big guy beside him. Yeah. I wonder if he broke his arm accidentally or if somebody else did it for him. Well, his arm's in a sling. Sure is. Uh-oh. He just got a load of the red rose in his coat lapel. <laughs> I guess he's not so tough. <laughs> Looks can be deceiving. Annie, the little guy just took something from the big guy's pocket. Yeah, I saw him, too. It went into the umbrella. I've got to nab that run, Annie. Well, you'll have to move fast because he is. I'll get him. Annie, tell the big guy with his arm in a sling that his pocket's just been picked and tell him to stand by. Yeah, okay, I will. Hey, listen. Hey, you with the umbrella. I want to talk to you. Wait a minute, wait. There's no use running, fella. I got longer legs than you have. Let me go. What's the meaning of this? You know what it is. I do not. How dare you put your hand upon Let's me? Let's see what you got in the umbrella. No, don't touch it. No, don't. Hey, no. hey, what's going on here? Come and see, Monahan. I was wondering when one of you store detectives would show up. Well, Casey. Hey, what's wrong? <clears throat> Mr. Carrick. What? You know this little runt, Monaghan? Well, I... Uh... Monaghan, order this uncouth individual to remove his obnoxious hand from my person and to apologize for the indignity he's caused me. Say, look here, half yeah, now, no, Look, look, look. Take it easy, Casey. What? Uh, you ladies and gentlemen, uh, go on about your shopping, please. There's, there's been a mistake here. A mistake? Yes, yeah, Casey, Mr. Carrick, come on with me, quick. Behind that partition to the stockrooms. Look here, Monaghan. I'll explain everything, Casey. When we get away from this crowd. Yeah, you better. Hey, Casey. Casey, the man with his arm in the sling hurried away from me after I told him his pocket had been picked. He didn't even thank me. I lost him in the crowd. Oh, that's great, Annie. All I needed was a little more mystery. Huh? Say, Monaghan, what goes on in this store? You All know? right, uh, through this door, Casey. Back to the stock rooms, and I'll explain. Your explanation better be good. Simply tell this impertinent interloper who I am, Monaghan. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. I'll take care of everything, Mr. Carrig. And uh, to save you any more bother... Will you make yourself comfortable in this room here while I tell this gentleman who uh, you really are? Gentlemen, you call this varlet? Varlet, what's that? Yeah, but please, I please. shall await you in this room, Monaghan, but don't keep me waiting long. You're not going to wait there with that umbrella full of things you've stolen. Come on, give it to Return me. Return my umbrella! Oh, no. Until I'm told what this is all about, I'm hanging on to the evidence of what I think it's about. I condescend to humor you. Take this person out of my sight, Monaghan. Uh, what is it? Our friend Monaghan is going to tell us right now, Annie, or else. Uh, come away from that room where I put him. Uh, he mustn't hear. All right. All right. Uh, you step into this stock room. Now, then, I'll close the door. Yeah, and I'll empty the umbrella I took from your little pal. Huh? Look at this stuff, Monaghan. Things stolen from this store with a tag still on them. Now, come on. Tell me why you treated a lousy little shoplifter as though he was a tin god and made me look like a sap. Look, uh, will you and Miss Williams keep this out of your paper, Casey? Uh, if it gets in, I'll lose my job. Huh? Well, give us the lowdown before you ask any favors. Okay, Casey. That little guy's sister is Mrs. Clayton Westfield. Oh, the Mrs. Clayton Westfield? Exactly. Brother Wilmer that you just met is a kleptomaniac with complications. He thinks he's a reincarnation of a guy named Robin Hood. Robin Hood? Huh? Yeah, yeah, who stole from the rich to give to the poor. Yeah, I know, I read the book. Yeah, well, we store detectives have to protect him. And the Clayton Westfield name. Protect him? Yep. You see, Mrs. Westfield pays for everything he steals. He's uh, got what you might call a <coughs> shoplifting charge account. Mrs. Westfield pays for everything Brother Wilmer steals? She sends out monthly checks. Well, now, how does she know what he pays? He always shows her his loot when he goes home and she makes a note of the price tags. Then he goes out and gives the stuff to people he thinks that needs it. Just a harmless nut. Well, that's okay for the store he lifts from, but when he picks a guy's pocket, how does the guy get his stuff back? But Wilmer Carrig didn't pick pockets. Oh, oh, yes, he does. Oh, we saw it. Sure, he made a snatch from a customer at your perfume. Carrig's huh? never been known to well, do it. All right, here's the evidence. The one thing that hasn't got your price tag on it. What? tobacco pouch here. Here it is. Look at it. Uh, you're right, Casey. That isn't ours. It wasn't worth over two bucks when it was new. So the guy didn't lose much. He lost the key to his hotel room. Uh, the key? Sure, it's inside the pouch. Huh. Ben Dixon hotel tag on the key. I'll send her right over there. Well, the man couldn't have wanted it very badly, as I told you, Casey. He walked away when yeah, I told him Yeah, that was possible. true. It wasn't... I can't figure why Carrie took... He's no dip. All right, let's ask him. Yep. All right, come on. Now, look, uh, Casey, uh, humor the nut, will you? He'll do anything for you if you treat him like a big shot. All right. And, well, you know, as I said... His sister is important. Yeah, okay, Monahan. I'll even call him your royal highness if it'll help you any. <laughs> well, here's the room I left him in. Uh, we've come back, Mr. Carrick. Hey, to... Monahan. <gasps> Holy 
lying on the floor and there's blood on his head. He's been blackjacked. Is he all Wait, right? Wait, let's see. Pulse is okay. He's just been KO. Half his pockets have been turned inside out, Casey. Somebody has frisked him. Yeah, but who? Wait a minute, he's coming too. He'll tell us. Uh, are you are you all right, Mr. Carrick? Oh, I, I have a headache, man. All right, I'll get you to a doctor in a minute, sir, but... First of all, will you tell us... Uh, a man came in after you left me, the, the man with the rose in his lapel. The guy with his arm in a sling? Yes. But his arm was out of the sling when he opened the door, and then he hit me. Casey! Why had you taken a tobacco pouch from that man's pocket, Mr. Carrick? I took it in order to... to solve a mystery. You took it in order to... Monaghan, have you told these persons who I am? Well, I, I've uh, given them uh, kind of an idea, Mr. Carrick. Good. Then I'll speak freely. My mission in life is to redress wrongs, sir. I am a defender of the right. I see. When I first noticed that man with his arm in a sling, he made a most unfavorable impression on me. I watched him. And when I saw another unprepossessing-looking character approach him and furtively slip a tobacco pouch in his hand, I prepared for action. Wait a minute. Another guy gave arm in a sling that pouch? Yes. A villainous-looking churl with red hair who quickly disappeared into the cloud of chopper. So you wanted to see what was in the tobacco pouch? As defender of the right, it was my duty to see. Casey, that hotel key. The guy must have slugged and searched Mr. Carrig in order to get it back. see that pouch again, Monaghan, will you? What? Yeah, yeah. Here, Casey. Right. Only a key inside. Yeah, that's all. The room 405 Ben Dixon Hotel. Oh, I don't get it. Neither do I. Hey, what is that? Out in the store. Hey, come on, Monaghan. Come on. Dump it. I'll oh, say. God. Let me through, please. Me, me too. too. Me too. Here, here, here. What happened there? I'm a policeman. That man on the floor, officer, he suddenly doubled up and fell at my feet. Huh. A knife has been driven through his back case. Yes, and into his heart. He's finished. Did uh, anyone see who knifed him? Uh, you. Uh, no, sir. I, I only saw him fall. I didn't see anyone. Casey. That dead man is... Mr. A... Casey. Yes, Mr. Carrick. He's the person who hit me. Yes, that's right. Somebody's rubbed out our guy who wore his arm in a sling. <laughs> Our story will continue in just a moment. I've got a good word for everybody who likes good beer. And that good word is glass. Yes, glass. Beer in glass. Beer in glass bottles. For glass and glass alone can bring you beer and ale that's brewery bright. And now we have a new kind of bottle. The Anchor Glass One-Way Bottle. The bottle you never have to take back to the store. The bottle that cuts out the nonsense and nuisance of deposits. The Anchor Glass One-Way No-Deposit Bottle is so light, so compact, so inexpensive to produce that you never bother about empties. You just dispose of them as you would any other food container. And let's not forget that good word, glass. This no-deposit container is made of glass, clean glass, which never affects the taste or flavor of anything it contains. No wonder the Anchor Glass One-Way No-Deposit Bottle is sweeping America. If you want perfect flavor, demand your beer in glass bottles. If you want the extra convenience, demand your favorite brand in the new Anchor Glass One-Way No-Deposit Bottle, a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Casey, why are you pulling me away? You want to get out of the mob around that dead man, Annie? may get an exclusive story if we work fast. How? I've got that tobacco pouch and the hotel key. Well, I don't see how that. Think that's... back, Annie. There was nothing the matter with that guy's arm. Well, why did he wear that sling and a red rose in his lapel? Oh, as a means of identification? Sure. To somebody who didn't know him. And the red-headed man slipped in the pouch. Containing only a key, which he tried to get back after Carrie took it, but which he wouldn't claim openly when you tipped him that it had been taken. And he gets a knife in his back. Well, I'm going to use that key to find out why. Well, how'll you use it? One lock room 405 at the Ben Dixon Hotel before word gets around that Arm in a Sling is dead. Oh, now, wait a minute, Casey. You give that key to the cops and let them... Yeah, let them crab a possible exclusive. But we may walk into serious trouble. Annie, you're not walking into anything. I'm going alone. Oh, no. Oh, yes, yes, definitely, yes. If anybody's waiting in that room, they're going to be expecting a guy who'll show up alone. Well, the dead man is about my size and coloring, and I'll have my Arm in a Sling and a red rose in mine. But you have 
Sure. Come on. We'll buy him right here. Come oh, on, no, wait a minute. This sounds too dangerous, Casey. I won't let Look, you. Look, kid, you'll go with me to the Ben Dixon and park yourself in the lobby. If I'm not down within half an hour, you call the cops. Slate. Hello. I expected you sooner than this. I got here as soon as I could. Come on in. It's more comfortable in here. Oh. Peephole in the door, I see. I wanted to be sure the man I talked to wore the identification agreed upon by you and our friend in Chicago. You made quite a reputation for yourself, Slate, as a careful workman. Also, as a man who doesn't ask questions. If I ask questions, I'd want to know why you got your face covered up with a mask. I think you can figure that one. I'm careful, too. Especially when I hire a killer like yourself. It's smart to be careful. Now that we understand each other, I'll give you your directions. The man you're to kill is quite a big shot. Yeah. His name is Ben Flack. Flack? Flack? That mean anything to you? Why should it? Here are several pictures of him. Study them this evening, then destroy them. Your man spends most of his time at the Ben Flack Community Club in Hook Ridge across the river. Here's $2,000. You'll get the additional $3,000 agreed upon when the job is done. That's all. You can leave by this door. Thanks. S-48, leave it. Hey! Red! Let me close this door, boss, quick. Crazy fool. Why did you hit Slate with your gun? This guy ain't Slate. What? Slate got a knife in his back about ten minutes after I passed him the key. Knife in his back? Yeah. I don't know who did it. When I heard about it, I hot-footed up here to tip you off. Heard you talking to this phony behind the door. When you opened it, I let him have it. Who is this man? He wore a sling and a rose. i never seen him before. Hmm. He may know who I am. He knows our plan. Eh? Yeah. Well, there's only one thing to do. We can't kill him here. Read my cars in the parking lot down the street. Bring yeah. him to the rear entrance of this place. Yeah, and then what? Come up the back stairs and help me get this wise guy down to the car by the back stairs. Now get going and fast. <laughs> He promised not to call you police unless he stayed upstairs over half an hour, Captain Logan. And then I called men from the nearest precinct station before I phoned you. What did the precinct men find, Miss Williams? Room 405 and the connecting room were empty, but there were bloodstains on the floor. Uh, bloodstains? Yeah. Captain, they think somebody killed Casey and carried his body down the back stairs. Well, it'd serve him right. I warned this happy butt into police business once too often, and I warned you. Oh, Captain. Uh, I'm sorry, Miss Williams. I... I often want to murder Casey, but nobody else is going to do it. I'll come right up to the Ben Dixon and try to pick up the Lux trail. There's no trail to pick up, Captain, and no lead. He's just gone. Stopping place, phony. That, that boathouse. Huh? That yeah. very isolated boathouse, Mr. Casey. Oh, you found out who I am. Yes. From press cards in your pocket while you were unconscious. <sighs> well, you... You must know it's pretty dangerous business to knock off a guy in my racket. The newspapers will never get off your tail. It won't be nearly as dangerous to kill you as it would be to let you live. You've learned too much. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say. You, uh... Able to get out of the car under your own steam? I guess I can make it. Open the boathouse door, Red. I'll keep this snooper well covered. Okay, Lockett. Oh. So you're Lockett? Ben Flax's lawyer? Yes. Doesn't matter whether you know who I am. Now. All right. Come on inside, Mug. Nice, uh, 
Nice place we've got here. Don't you think? You're going to bump me off. I'm going to kill you, Casey. You tried to make a fool of me, and I don't forgive that. Stop it! Stop it, you? Drop those guns. This place is surrounded by police. Cops! Lock it! Drop those guns or we shoot. We can't put up a fight against men we can't see. Drop your gun, Red. Oh, huh? Okay, okay. Pick up those guns, Casey. That's the sweetest order I've ever taken. All right, you cops can show yourselves now. I've got the guns. There aren't really any policemen, Casey. What? Huh? Only me. Mr. Collick. Hey, who's that little runt? That half-pint trick to... Well, Watch you... your tongues, Violet. Yeah, keep your mitts in the what? air. Mr. Carrick. I've never been so glad to see anybody in my life, but I don't understand. It's all very simple. You tried to steal my mystery. I tried to steal you? Certainly. I got that key from the man who was killed. Then you made off with it for your own selfish purpose. As defender of the right and redesser of wrongs, I naturally followed you. You followed? To the Ben Dixon Hotel. I proceeded up the back stairs to room 405. Entered by the door you had neglected to lock. And listened at the door to the connecting room. You heard what I said to Casey? Yes, Varlet. Oh, so that's what a Varlet is. And what you said to your red-headed henchman there. Now, just a... When he left your car at the rear of the hotel to assist you with Casey, I concealed myself in its fortuitously unlocked luggage compartment and rode here with you to the rescue. <sighs> well, my pal, you're some guy. Look, before we uh, drive these two birds to the nearest police station, Mr. Carrig, will you... Give them a frisk. They just might have an extra gat on them. I was about to suggest such a procedure, and I am an expert at uh, frisky. Uh, no, no. Oh, yes, yes, I see what you mean. Uh, don't try anything while he's going over you, Lockett. Are you, Red? Well, you... I'm not a gunman like you, Birds, but I'm a pretty good shot. All right, are they clean, Mr. Carrick? Quite the contrary, to be literal. But we need have no fear now that they'll produce a hidden gun. Okay, you two. We start for the cops. Look, Casey... Maybe we can make a deal. Forget it, Lockett. Don't be a fool. Every man has his price. Mine's too high for you. Defenders of the right cannot be purchased. To the cars. Katie, wait. Outside, Lockett. You too, Red. We're going to the cops. No, they're not. Who is... Ben Flack. Ben. The big boss. Surprised to see me, Lockett. You and Red. Well, Ben, I... Well, you... Casey, feel anything at the back of your neck? Yeah. It's a gun in the hand of a friend of mine. Better drop the two gats in your hands. There is a man behind you, Casey. Drop him, mister. Okay. Bring him up, Joe. Now, Joe and I will rearrange the plan you two had. Then how? How, how do I happen to be here, Lockett? Oh, I've been keeping a steady on you, eye on you and Red for a long time. You haven't made a move I haven't known about. The dirty double-crossing rats. You never put anything over on Ben Fleck. I knew about the red-hot your Chicago pal shipped on here before he even got on the train. And one of my guys put a shiv in his back before you ever saw him, Lockett. But I'm taking the pleasure of killing you and Red myself. No, Ben, don't! Stop. 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 That ends that. Casey, I'm sorry you and the little guy here had to see what just happened. I can guess what you mean, Ben. This overgrown murderer is altogether obvious, Casey. We are dangerous witnesses. That's it, Joe. Yes, boss? I've always kind of liked Casey, and I'm soft-hearted with guys I like. You do it. Sure, boss. Not if I can help, help it. Don't let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Let him get your gun. I'll flip him on the head. That you will not do. Oh. Now I'll shoot the other one, Casey. Wait a minute. You don't have to, Wilbur. I've got him under control. Hey. Where did you get that gun you shot Ben Flack with? From Red. Huh? I found it concealed in his pocket when I searched him in the boathouse. You didn't tell me. I retain my old Robin Hood technique, Casey. I never tell anybody everything. Huh. I hope my bullets didn't kill this murderer. I prefer to let the law take its course in such matters. Oh, he only winged him. He'll live. Till after a jury hears our eyewitness testimony. Excellent. Well, I'll... Pile these two sleeping characters into the car. Get to the cops before anything else happens. Uh, we've had an adventure this afternoon and evening, haven't we? Uh, you said it, Wilmer. <laughs> I've been conked on the head, taken for a ride. Thought twice I was going to be bumped off. And uh, you, you know, pal, I'm kind of all in. 
Hmm. Oh, brother defenders of the right should not be too critical of each other, Casey, but I'm afraid you have no staying power. <laughs> Join the crowd of the Blue Note in just a moment. Your friends will never guess when you set out your new two-quart sunburst crystal pitcher. And someone will say, where did you get that beautiful pitcher? We'll ask them to guess. They'll mention jewelry stores, high-class specialty shops, and the like. They'll never guess that you bought it new and bright for only 50 cents. For this beautiful two-quart sunburst crystal pitcher has the same diamond-like sparkle you see in the most costly hand-cut crystal. The kind of crystal that's handed down for generations as a family heirloom. Yes, the Sunburst Crystal Pitcher is an amazing bargain, a really great value. And yet, you'll find this Sunburst Crystal Pitcher and other equally great Sunburst Crystal values at any retail store selling household glass. Now, the Sunburst Crystal Pitcher costs only 50 cents, slightly more in distant cities. So ask for it by name you'll recognize the brilliant, sparkling, traditional sunburst pattern immediately. Sunburst Crystal is a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. With Locker dead and Flack got dead the rights for killing him and that redhead, Casey. It sure looks like you and that Wilma Carrig has busted up the Flack political machine. Huh? Yeah, it'll be pretty hard to reorganize with the ringleaders out of the picture, Edward. You don't seem very happy about having performed such a fine public service. Yeah, well, you see, I've, I've just been talked to by Miss Williams and Captain Logan. They, uh, sore at you? Yeah, and how. Yeah, and you know, to make the day absolutely perfect, I... I lost my watch somewhere. That's funny. Funny? Yeah, because a fella gave me a watch tonight. I stepped outside a minute to catch a breath of air, and a little fella comes up and says, you look like a poor working man who needs a watch. Then before I could say anything, he stuck it in my hand and beat it. Uh, uh, let's see that watch. Yeah, here it is. That's mine. You mean Mr. Wilmer Carrick? Hmm. Mr. Wilmer Carrick, the friend of the <laughs> poor. <laughs> Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures. All products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. by John Dietz. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Tittison is the Blue Note pianist. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town, so stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition which follows immediately over most of these stations.